Paul Daniels would be turning in his grave, God bless his soul, if he knew that the word magic was being used to describe a pot of endocrine disruptors and plastic. The only thing magic about this is that people are willing to pay over 70 quid for a pot of this. Now, thank you to this message. I've looked into the Charlotte Tilbury magic cream. I'm not gonna look at makeup as cosmetics ingredients isn't my expertise. Skincare ingredients, however, are. And I know a bad one when I see it. And you will be shocked to know what Charlotte puts in this. As usual, we're gonna start from the top to the bottom. The first ingredient on the ingredients list always has the most concentrate of that ingredient in the whole product, going down to the least. So the first one in this is aqua water. Fine, no problem, needs a preservative. What preservatives do they use? Then we've got homosalate, which is a UV filter. It's definitely not biodegradable and some studies have shown that it is an endocrine disruptor, so it will mess up with your hormones. Glycerol sterate is an emulsifier binding the oils to the waters. It's derived from glycerin. This one is biodegradable and totally safe. Ethylexyl is another UV filter. Again, a chemical one, not biodegradable. And again, some studies have shown that this is also an endocrine disruptor. Butylene glyco, you may have seen before when I've said that I don't like this ingredient. It's derived from petroleum, which is non-renewable and can clog your pores. It's not biodegradable and it's used in this as a solvent. Glycerin, I'm guessing this is derived from vegetables and not animals. And again, this is this one's totally safe. It's used as a moisturiser. Avobenzone, another UV filter, again, another chemical one, not biodegradable. And again, some studies have said that it's an endocrine disruptor. Octocrylene, another UV filter, much the same as the one before. And this one's derived from petroleum. This alcohol is absolutely fine. It's put in there as an emollient and is usually derived from vegetable oils. C1215 is an emollient, it's derived from benzoic acid and C1215 alcohols, which are petroleum based. Chloe ingredient, I cannot stand. It's a microplastic, it's 2024 and you're spreading microplastics on your skin. So there's a lot of concerns around the bioaccumulation of this. It can accumulate in your organs, oh, all sorts. It's non-biodegradable, it's horrible, horrible stuff. And you know the reason why they put it in here? It's a cheap emollient, that's all. Much like the next ingredient, dimethicone, another microplastic, just put in there for an emollient. It's not needed. It's bad for your skin, it's bad for the environment. Phenoxephenol, derived from petroleum, put in here as a preservative. There's lots of natural alternative preservatives you can use. There is a little evidence to say that it's an endocrine disruptor, but it's not conclusive. We've got some shea butter, finally, something natural. Now, this one isn't organic. Like, I give you that. You've got shea butter, nice one. Can't argue with that. And then we're on to a peg. We're on to a peg. You know, I don't like the pegs. They are plastic. They are horrible. Sterif 21 is a peg. Put in there as an emulsifier. Again, there are plenty of other natural alternatives to this, but they are more expensive but you are charging 70 odd quid for 50 mil of it. So I think you could probably afford it. Oh, another good ingredient. We got some oat in there. Yes, I like that. It's not organic, but it's still good. Put in there as a soothing agent. Hey, you want another microplastic? Let's throw some carbona in there. As a thickener and a stabilizer. Super cheap, derived from acrylic acid and petroleum. Good Lord. Good Lord. The mythiconol, again, another microplastic. Put in there as an emollient. This potassium is put in there for another emulsifier, just for the texture. This one's okay. Chlorofencin is a synthetic preservative, but not an endocrine disruptor. It's not plastic. I mean, there's better alternatives, but okay. Caprylyl glyco is another preservative. Can be derived from coconut or palm or both. It's not bad. Xanthan gum, yes, this is a good one. This is a thickener and a stabilizer, completely natural, not an endocrine disruptor. This is a good ingredient. Hydrolyzed viola. This is natural. It's a skin conditioning agent. It's actually derived from a wild pansy plant. But yeah, this one's fine. Alanchin is another skin protecting agent. Can be natural, can be synthetic. But either way, it's not dangerous to you or the planet. This one's okay. Aloe vera. Can't go wrong with a bit of aloe vera juice. Better if it's organic. This one is in, but this is put in there for extra moisture. Totally natural. Good ingredient. Dysodium EDTA is a synthetic thickener. No conclusive evidence that it's an endocrine disruptor, but personally, I wouldn't use it. It's derived from ethylene diamine. 
Tocopherol is a vitamin E. This is a good ingredient. Put in there as an antioxidant. Usually derived from wheat germ oil. It can be synthetic. This one probably is, but it's not bad. This camellia seed oil is a natural oil. Put in there as an emollient. Totally safe. Rose fruit oil derived from the seeds of the rose bush. Put in there as an antioxidant and emollient. Totally fine. Another rose ingredient, this time from the petals. Again, this is totally fine. Put in there for fragrance. Sodium hydroxide is a pH adjuster just to make sure it's not too acid or too alkaline for your skin. Derived from salt and water. This one's fine as long as it's only in tiny, tiny amounts. Just because otherwise it will really irritate your skin. Sunflower seed oil, again, put in as an emollient. This one's absolutely fine. Be better if it's organic. It's not, but yeah. This alba leaf oil, again, is completely natural. This one is fine. Put in there for fragrance and it's also a skin conditioning agent. Sodium lactate is another pH adjuster derived from the fermentation of some sugars. Cocoa glucoside, this is a factant. I like this ingredient as long as it's palm free. It can also act as an emulsifier. You may find it in organic shampoos. Another peg, peg eight. Derived from ethylene glyco, which is petroleum based. Put in here as a solvent, it's not needed. This is just a type of synthetic glycerin. It's not too bad. It's not an endocrine disruptor and it's not a microplastic. It's put in there as a preservative. This sodium hyaluronate is a moisturizer derived from the fermentation of bacteria or some animal sources, but it's pretty natural and it is biodegradable. So okay, for all, again, another form of vitamin E. This one's fine. Now we're on to three palm derived ingredients and nowhere can I see that it's responsibly sourced palm. So I'm gonna assume that it's contributing to deforestation. All three are put in there for anti-aging properties, but the jury's out on to say if it actually does anything to your skin, especially in such small amounts. I'm not sure it's worth cutting down palm trees for, to be fair. I've never heard of this flower extract before, but I think it's put in there for fragrance. Ascorbic acid, it's an antioxidant, a type of vitamin C. This one's okay. Citric acid, another pH adjuster. Again, this one's totally natural, this one's fine. This leaf cell culture is curious. I'm not sure what it is, and it'll be in such a small amount in there, probably like 0.01%, that it won't have any effect on your skin whatsoever. But it's put in here as a skin condition agent and probably a buzzword, to be fair. And then linalool, that is a natural constitute of some essential oils. It can be an allergen, but I'm not worried about it. It's totally natural. And it'll be put in here because it's probably a constitute of one of the previous essential oils that are in there. So there we go, would you pay 70 odd quid for a pot of plastic? I know I wouldn't, but there's no judgment from me if you do. You do you, I'll do me. And I'm gonna keep exposing these brands using cheap ingredients in their skincare, but charging you too much money, in my opinion. So if there are any other skincare products you'd like me to dissect, just let me know and I will try my best.